Hey, everybody. Welcome to the YouTube version of K Golasso. I'm here with Jimmy Conrad, which means we're talking CONCACAF. We're talking U.S. men's national team. And the subject of today is Christian Pulisic. Jimmy Conrad, what's going on, man? I am excited to get into this topic of Christian Pulisic, obviously one of the best players we've ever produced. So I want him to be healthy so that we can start to play him and he can be part of the conversation in a more meaningful way. I like that. And for those of you who are watching this, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like, make sure you comment. It keeps this thing going. It keeps the algorithm going so more people can find this type of content. We want to keep making this for you guys. So we appreciate everything you do. So keep it going. So Jimmy, Christian Pulisic injured since the Honduras game in World Cup qualifying. Uh, Chelsea's got some really busy upcoming fixtures. But just in terms of uh, his impact on the national team, before we get into the upcoming schedule, what it's going to take for him to be called in, his importance in the side, looking at this last uh, window, now we've gone through six games with the national team. Has his importance uh, shifted at all, or do you think he's still sort of player number one when you're building uh, this roster if all is fit and healthy? Well, I do think that maybe I'm not answering this directly, but I will say that when he's on the ball, you'd be really hard pressed to find another player that can do what he can do and, and to break the lines with his running to, to, to look to combine quickly and, and run at teams. I think he actually is one of the few players that we've produced in, in recent memory that strikes fear into the opposing teams. You, they, they're, 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 they're creating a plan to defend him. And that, that really speaks volumes to the type of quality that he has. And obviously he's wearing the number 10 shirt for Chelsea. So I think his quality speaks for itself, but he needs to stay healthy. He needs to give us consistent performances. And that seems to be the knock that's fallen him around a little bit because he gets kicked a lot because he is so talented. He's always on the ball. I want him on the ball. And there are certain situations where when the game gets a little bit tight and there's teams that are stacking him up and making it difficult where I want him to maybe take that next step in his evolution. And this might be a big ask, but this is what I would be as a coach saying, how do you still have an impact on the game an influence on the game when they're now occupying two or three players and really trying to get around you? I mean, Messi has that all the time and yet he still finds a way to have an impact. Am I comparing him to Messi? No, it's, these are not to say they're not, they have similar traits, but but that's the that's the issue that that Messi had to run into at some point. You're going to stop getting one v one situations. You're going to get one v twos, one v threes. How do you make that play into our favor, not only individually but collectively as a group? So, yes, he's my he's my favorite player when he's on the ball and running to people. There's nobody else I want to see wearing a U.S. shirt in that situation outside of Tobin Heath on the women's side. Yeah, fantastic, Tobin Heath. But yeah, with Christian Pulisic, what I like about his game, right? And and I agree with you in the sense that. He draws numbers over, which mm -hmm. means there are imbalances somewhere else on the exactly. field. And very rarely do your club or your national team have a player of that quality where everybody is looking at that player and the ball. And that allows players to freeze or overcompensate and create spaces in other areas. And, you know, you and I were having these takes about, is it Brendan Aronson? Is it Gio Reyna uh, as, as, the, as the starter on the other side? And people were, were really baffled by the thought of that, of, of there being competition for for Gio Reyna within the team. And what I like about Christian Pulisic and what I, what I, I guess my, my next, next question is that, is that are we ultimately making him a better player now that we have a, a little bit of a, a consistency of saying Tyler Adams, Eunice Musa, and, and, and Weston McKinney in that midfield who can now advance the ball further forward. Now we're talking about Serginho Des being higher on the field and we're accepting some of these things, getting a more, a little more clarity or does he not necessarily fit within that? Cause he's going to want to come back and get the ball further. I mean, is it just about getting him in, into better spots, knowing that he has more players around him. Cause we saw in the 2018 cycle, he felt this immense pressure to just get the ball and run it guys. And we've seen it at the beginning of this cycle with him. And when he plays with the national team, he feels like, well, I'm Christian Pulisic from Chelsea. I've got to carry this team. I'm better than everybody on the field. Therefore I can't just be a player. I need to be the player, but now we're starting to see Ricardo Pepe. We're seeing Musa. We're seeing other players come in. Does that ultimately make him better? Or does it diminish his his value unless he's willing to accept, hey, we actually don't need you to come back and get the ball off of our defenders. I don't think it diminishes his value at all. It's all going to be depending on his perspective, his perspective, how he receives that information that, and Weston McKinney's going to have to go through the same thing. We talked about it during this past window that, hey, we don't need you to be the hero on every single play. Pick your spots. And I think I'd say the same thing to Christian Pulisic. You're going to start to get a little bit more space because you have a little bit more quality around you because there's some talent. And speaking about those imbalances, if he does get stacked up, 
one versus two, one versus three. How quickly can he get off that feet and find that imbalance? And how quickly can the players that receive the ball take advantage of that imbalance on the other side of the field or in the middle of the field or wherever it may be, taking a shot from distance or, you know, getting that ball on the top of the box, drawing in somebody and playing a quick one, two with somebody else. These are all possibilities now. But because he kind of grew up, or at least in, within the national team of, hey, you got to be the guy. And there was about a year there, maybe 18 months, where if Christian Pulisic didn't do something for us, we didn't really have that many shots. So yeah. everything was on his shoulders. And that's probably why he still maintains that mindset. But if you can lean into the Chelsea example a little bit and the club he's already at, he already knows he plays on a team where he doesn't have to be the guy every single time, but he still finds ways to have impacts. And that's either with driving the ball and, and gain, gaining a foul higher up the field or getting a yellow card for somebody important on the other team. There's all these little things that he can do that ladder up into this overall success, both individually and collectively. It's going to be tough, but I love that there's competition. Okay, maybe Gio Reyna on, on his day, if they're both healthy and fit and ready to go, is better than Brendan Aronson. Okay, that's fine. That, that's, a, that's a great argument, I, and I agree with you. But there is something about Brendan Aronson that I do like. He's a bit of a spark plug, and I think he might end up being a better super sub for us than as a starter. Okay. That said, because you have a Brendan Aronson there waiting in the wings who's ready to go, and you know that you can rely on him if you needed him to start, that should only make the guys there that are – quote unquote, the starters a little bit more sharp and ready to go that they have to go out there and perform. And if they don't, then nothing's guaranteed. Nobody, nobody owes you anything, right? It's a big yeah. life theme. Nobody owes you anything. Nobody deserves a spot for the night. You get to go out there and earn it every single yeah. week and every single time you Do go you, out there. And the, and the players that don't feel that way, I think they lose their sharpness. Do you think Christian Pulisic is currently competing for his spot with anybody or is it his spot when he's fit and healthy? I think it's his spot when he's okay. fit and healthy right now. And, right. and I, it would be really hard to see that change given his service to the team. I do think there's a bit of a legacy there. And of course, again, when he's on the field, the game's different. You know, he he does provide a different dynamic that a lot of our other guys can't do as consistently as I think yeah. Christian Pulisic can. Uh, Chelsea's fixtures coming up for, for his comeback are he's got Malmo, he's got Norwich, he's got Southampton, Newcastle, Malmo again, and Burnley. So a run of form where if you're an injured player coming back, it's actually a great situation to be in for squad rotation. Perhaps if you're not the guaranteed starter, it gives him a chance to get in. How many minutes do you do you think he needs to be playing in a match? Not to be called in, but to be called in and considered to be a starter uh, for, for this for this next camp. Because, you know, you know they're going to bring him in if he's, if he's on the field at all. But to be a starter, to take somebody off the field, uh, what's it going to take? How many minutes do you want to see him play to get to that point? Uh, well, personally, I'd like to see him get a couple games, whether that's as a starter or as a sub, just to see kind of the decision making he's he's providing when he where he picks up the ball. How's he feeling? What's his burst like? How's he looking to combine? Because when you lose sharpness, it isn't just individual. It's also your vision and your confidence and all these other little things that go into it. So I'd like him to get at least 90 to 180 minutes. You know, even if I, I'd be really surprised, especially against Mexico, if Greg Berhalter had the courage to leave Christian Pulisic on the bench, even if he's only played 90 minutes in that run of games. And, uh, and I wouldn't hold it against Greg. I, I would, that would make complete sense to me. You know, obviously he's one of our most talented players and, and has done more than enough to, to continue to warrant being our number one starter until proven otherwise. But if this kind of rinse and repeat of plays a little bit, gets injured, doesn't play for a while, I think if you run into three or four months of that kind of being it, then maybe he's not an automatic starter anymore or if he goes out against mexico and and jamaica the second game in our group in the november window away and he's not sharp you know then i think you start to potentially have a conversation and, and think a little bit bigger about how you can start to you know play to his strengths but make sure you're getting the most out of him with also not making him feel vulnerable right there's there's a lot of conversations and a lot of communication i think that has to happen with all of your players but especially the ones that you're putting a lot of responsibility on I agree. And I think I rest easy knowing that he's best when he's facing the field, when he's mm -hmm. best and he's advancing the ball forward. And I, we saw a few glimpses where you had a uh, Ricardo Pepe knowing that, hey, the best thing for me to do is lay it off to a Christian Pulisic who's now fa facing the field. When I think about Serginho Des, when we're talking about in and out and out the other side to create the a 1v1 situation, because the only time that Christian Pulisic is going to be 1v1 is when it's a changing the point of attack and get him in into good spots, or it's a layoff where he's now facing the field and players are kind of pulled in and out of position, which I like when I think about Yunus Musa, uh, Serginho Dest, when I think about Brendan Aronson stretching the field on the other side, and, and just the intelligence of, of some of these players that I think are starting to, to come to life. And again, it's a long ways until this team has the cohesion that we want, but the, but the, the identity of this team is starting to come to life a little bit, and I like um, just the overall IQ of what this group brings mm -hmm. to the table. Jimmy, any final thoughts? 
No, I'm just excited to get Christian Pulisic healthy and then hopefully happy and us getting three points over Mexico. Let's make that happen as soon as possible. I love it. And thank you all for watching and or listening uh, to the K Golasso podcast. And make sure you follow K Golasso podcast on Twitter at K Golasso pod. Subscribe to the K Golasso page on YouTube and hit the notification bell because we want these to get dropped right into your lap when these videos come out. We don't want you to miss a thing. We want you to be part of the conversation. So make sure you're liking these videos and commenting on them when you get the chance. And until next time, thank you very much from Jimmy and I.